Okay. I'm Kristen, and this is Alex. I'm Alex. Alex. We're best friends. Um, and this is our channel called Who Gives a Sip, in which we discuss wine. Uh, for sometimes. Our... Yeah, sometimes. Maybe some ranting <laughs> um, about Most, random topics. Most, yeah. While I mean, drinking like, wine. It's like Wine's half around. wine. Yeah, there's yeah. wine. So we're in my basement this time, which isn't as creepy as it sounds. Uh, there's a punching bag back there, and a Nerf basketball, yeah. and a creepy basement window. Yeah. So that's fine. Yeah. And we're using my phone. So we're trying out some different techniques. Yeah. We used my laptop last time. Mm -hmm. It was kind of grainy. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this week... Oh, and Alex hasn't read the label. No. So it's, <laughs> it's going to be so much fun because last week was really great. <laughs> uh, we went with Fat Bastard. It's a Pinot Noir. Yeah. 2014. Good um, vintage, I've, I've heard. Very good vintage. Screw top, which is actually not as bad as it sounds. And I just really love this little, like, hippo thing. I don't really know. But it's is adorable. Is it like a treat? Is it a topiary? It's a, it's a topiary, mm. I think. The origin of the fat bastard. Good friends, Thierry, who is a renowned French winemaker. It was in parentheses. And Guy, a British wine industry rebel, who I think we, we might want to Google at some point, created fat bastard almost by accident. It started out as, a, out as an experiment Thierry had been doing in the back of his cellar, leaving a barrel mm. on the lees, yeast cells, in parentheses. He did, that's what lees are, Oh, apparently. On the lees, which is the yeast cells. Uh, he didn't know what to expect, but when the friends tried the wine... <laughs> this, this is the best part. Okay. Okay, I'm ready. It actually tells you, in parentheses, to read it with a strong French accent. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Thierry exclaimed... Now that is what you call a fat bastard. Oh, wait, is that what? a French accent? I don't know. I don't. I mean, maybe. it's. He it actually said there is a Z. It's now Z A T uh -huh. I Z. What you call a fat bastard? Is that something bastard. that you will use to like describe wine, though? Like I, is that a good thing? Well, so there's the parentheses for read with a strong French accent. Mm -hmm. uh, this very British expression perfectly described the wine's wonderful color. Um and round rich palette so that's what they called it also there's a cute little picture of the hippo on the back here that says no one remembers exactly where the hippo came from because <laughs> they were all drunk yeah they were all drunk they were so excited yeah. about the wine. why do i have stories about that where i'm like this sounded like a good idea <laughs> right You're like i don't really <laughs> that's actually how this started we don't have wine glasses this week oh yeah sorry um whoops yeah i forgot oops yeah that's why we were at her house because she's the classy one <laughs> Okay. Let's do this. Oh, so, can we clink? Yeah. Are we swirling? I swirled. What was the thing? Oh, we took a wine class. We did, yeah. So light body, medium body, or full body mm -hmm. in terms of milk. Yes. So like skim milk is a, similar to a light body wine. 2% mm -hmm. like a medium and whole milk would be a, like a full body. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I thought it was really useful. And I think that makes sense, like the way that it feels when you drink it. Okay, and let's do this. Okay. The color is a little bit different than the pre. What was? What did we drink? I told you it wasn't. It was remember. a Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> I remember only because I said Cabernet Sauvignon. Yeah. So uh, a Pinot Noir is a lighter body, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So it is. It is less. Um, is opaque the one? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Opaque yeah. would be full body because I feel like the darker it got, more translucent. Is that correct? I don't yeah. know. You more can see, see through, through it more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, we're not experts. So, this bottle doesn't have the description of like the flavors we're supposed to be tasting. Mm -mm. So, we're really just like, we have to figure it out ourselves. We're... Yeah, and okay. since we still don't know how to taste stuff. Yeah. I feel like cherry, maybe? Okay. Mm -hmm. Which he did say, I think we asked him about that, and he said some of it's kind of suggestive, too. Mm -hmm. It's the thing that your brain does when someone's right. like, oh, don't you smell grass? And you're like, I do, yeah. but you didn't before. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's maybe, okay, how's the smell? Um, I have a haircut on the 22nd of this month, which I'm very excited about. I haven't had my mm -hmm. haircut in a really long We've time. We've been doing some Pinterest looks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep. So much. So much Pinterest. So I'm trying a new hairstylist because I don't want to have to talk 
oh. to the hairstylist that I've been seeing for the last year because a lot of things in my life have changed mm -hmm. and I just, I don't want to get into that yeah. with her. And I know she's going to want to talk about like, Oh, how have you been? I haven't seen you in such a long time. And, um, I don't know. Like, I feel like it would be rude to be like, Hey, um, cut my hair. Mm -hmm. Um, I usually just say, oh, I'm good. How have things been with you? Because then they talk about themselves. Yeah, no, that's usually what I do in those types of situations. And then I just, they just fucking ramble on, which isn't really any better, I guess, except I don't feel like I'm having to share stuff with right. a stranger. Like personal details about your yeah, life. Like, yeah, like, yeah, some shit's fucked up right now. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Cause I want to talk about it in a salon full of people right. that I don't fucking people. know. Yeah. So, uh, you can try that. Okay. If you want, just yeah. in case this one's shiny. Yeah. You should smile more. Oh, shut the fuck up. Like, that's the whole... Oh, yeah, okay. I'm very <laughs> passionate about this because apparently I suffer from a syndrome, which some yeah. of you may be familiar with, called resting bitch face. RBF for short. See, when I'm like this, people think I'm mad. And I'm like, this is what my fucking face looks like, dude. So, yeah, no, like, I don't know what it is about little old men, but they feel like they need to tell me that I should smile more and that I'm prettier when I smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're telling me that the, the face that I have, that I was born with, that <laughs> I have no control over unless I'm going to do plastic surgery, which is terrifying. So, uh, that face is not good enough for public consumption and that I must <laughs> smile in order to make you feel better about how I look. I've never thought about it that way. Yeah. You're fucking welcome. Yeah. Now, every time someone's going to be like, you should smile, you're going to be like, fuck you! I don't... I think people might be too afraid to say that to me because people don't say that to me. You do kind of have a super resting bitch face. <laughs> like yours actually look like it's, it's great, but it's such a pretty resting bitch face. Yeah, you're welcome. I think See, it's just that's like... what people should say. Like, hey, you know what? You have a really nice Your resting face bitch face. Is perfect. Yeah, I like it when you're frowny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, so um, the way my face looks is the way my face looks. Fuck you, old man. So let's talk about the wine. Oh, yes. Okay. So the wine. I think it's drinkable. You said that you didn't enjoy this as much as uh, the, the cab that we had last week. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's definitely light bodied. Yes, it is light bodied. Based on what we've learned in our class with Gavin at Total Wine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think it's very drinkable. I just don't, it, it's like it doesn't have as much uh, oomph. Yeah. As okay, much it's flavor to it. Also forgettable, I think. Yeah. Forgettable is yeah. a good... Yeah, there's, like, not anything that's really, like, standing out to me. Like, I'm like, oh, a red wine. A fairly light-bodied red right. wine as well. I this was so... Yeah, wine is hard, you guys. But, like, I'm not able to pick out any distinct flavor profiles, if you will. Like, I distinctly remember, like, yeah. when we first drank it, was the alcohol burn. Yeah. Which I think they were talking about, because the alcohol content, it's, like, 12.5%. Right. And that's what he was saying, right? The higher the percentage the more like burn mm -hmm. you get and the more like alcohol, like the lingering like alcohol type yeah. of, you know, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> the burn. Um, it's almost like that's like counteracting the quality or the flavor. Yeah. Like I taste that. Cause you're like, more Oh, than I, I can taste... get fucked up if I drink this. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. not, it's not very complex. There's like this like mm. watered down fruit flavor and then alcohol. So we talked about the screw top. Only in the sense that it is a screw top, but I think mm -hmm. that it might be an interesting thing to talk about. Um, that screw top, even though this was only a nine dollar bottle of wine, doesn't necessarily mean that it's low quality. So you don't want to rule out mm -hmm. a wine because it's screw top, um, based on that fact only. American wines are intended to be consumed sooner than uh -huh. some European wines, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily need it to age. So you put a screw cap on it, mm -hmm. which means that you're not getting as much oxygen none. into the... None. You get none oxygen <laughs> into <laughs> the bottle. Yeah, that was what he said, yeah. I think, is that yeah. the, there's none of the natural oxygenation. Oxygenation. Right. Oxygenation. I guess moral of the story is American wine, screw top okay. Basically... The screw tops are actually not necessarily a representation of the true value of mm -hmm. the wine. Or the, the class It's of the just wine that or... this is America and we mass produce everything. So right. we're like, hey, we don't buy wine 
most of us, the the rest of us mm-hmm. that are here for this, um, we don't have wine cellars. We're not going to buy a six hundred dollar bottle of wine to and hang leave out it in for our winery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. To like sit in our wine cellar for ten years, we're going to buy a bottle and fucking drink it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, screw tops. Um, but it prevents any oxygen from getting in. And then the corks do allow some, mm-hmm. and that's how the wine ages. So, should you buy a, a screw top bottle of wine? And leave it in your wine cellar for <laughs> 10 years it would taste exactly the same as it did 10 years ago yeah, because when you no oxygen it. has gotten to it right. uh so it's like a time capsule oh yeah kind of i guess yeah. um but yeah then the uh the corks allow the wine to naturally age it's not necessarily like a status thing but it also tends to be on wines that are less expensive or right. are intended to drink quickly if you like it drink it